Clarissa Shields has already achieved so much, and she's still so hungry. Shields has never dreamed small. Her goal is to secure the title of, quote, the greatest woman of all time. While only the entirety of her career will determine whether she's ultimately crowned as such, her journey to date has been like no other. For a young girl who had a troubled and tumultuous childhood in Flint, Michigan, boxing offered not only an escape, but also a purpose. Timing can be as critical as talent, and in 2012, women's boxing debuted at the Summer Olympics. Shields capitalized, winning a gold medal at the tender age of 17. Four years later, she repeated, becoming the first American boxer, male or female, to win gold medals at different Olympic Games. Her overall amateur record, an overwhelming 77 and one. As Shields grew into a young woman, she radiated a persona that matched her boxing style. Aggressive, bold, intimidating, and unapologetic. Some boxers are born to fight. Shields was born fighting. First, a disclaimer. At super middleweight, or 168 pounds, the female talent pool is tissue thin. In fact, in that division, BoxRec.com lists only 19 fighters, and that's worldwide. In November 2016, Shields, age 21, turned pro at that weight, scoring a hard-earned four-round shutout over her amateur rival, Franchon Cruz Desern. Cruz Desern, by the way, is now a world titleist. Shields' Showtime debut came in her second fight, this time at middleweight, against Hungary's Sylvia Sabadosh in Detroit, which is about 60 miles from Flint. And here is 21-year-old Clarissa Shields. The crowd here will tell you everything you need to know. Good luck to you. Touch In simple terms, Shields was too strong and Sabadosh was too slow. Good right hand of the body. And there was another big right hand. From the start, it was a raw beatdown. Left hand and another left hand and another left. Three punch combination again. In the second round, Sabadosh, dutifully moving forward throughout, tried to answer with some punches of her own. But all that did was allow Shields to punch and land more often. In the third, after Shields landed a flush hook, referee Harvey Dock took a couple of steps toward the fighters as if ready to call a halt. As it turned out, the mismatch extended into the fourth when Dock acted decisively, explaining to Sabadosh, quote, too many hard blows. End quote. And new NABF women's middleweight champion, Clarissa T-Rex Shields! Two fights later, Shields, in only her fourth pro bout, fought for two world titles at super middleweight. Her opponent, Germany's Nikki Adler, was 16-0 and in skills and speed, about 16 levels below Shields. Boxing doesn't often lend itself to statistics, but this one you couldn't miss. In round one, Adler failed to land a single punch. Clarissa Shields on the gas early as everybody expected it. She wobbles Adler with a right hand. She was staggered by a right hand 37 seconds in, and in the second, a hook rocked her again. Adler's never seen anything like this. And right now, she's just overwhelmed. And again, five-punch combination and another straight right hand. Shields was improving. Her punches were straighter than they had been, and she was now showing previously unforeseen patience without sacrificing any of her ferocity. And a left hand rocks her. Back into the ropes and a right hand. As for Adler, her limited tactics proved something that we already sensed. A flat-footed stance and a high guard wasn't going to cut it against Clarissa Shields. Big left hand staggers her again. And this one is just about done. 10 seconds after Shields connected with a huge hook in the fifth, referee Michael Griffin issued a mercy stoppage. That's it, it's over. Well stopped. Clarissa Shields gets her championship and gets her knockout. The two-time Olympic gold medalist was now a two-belt professional world titleist. Eyeing Shields from ringside was another titleist unbeaten middleweight champion, Christina Hammer. In time, they would clash in the biggest fight of their respective careers.
Shields began 2018 by defending her super middleweight belts against an intriguing opponent, Tori Nelson. Nelson was 41 years old. She had a son who was the same age as Shields, but Nelson was also unbeaten in 20 fights. Physically, she couldn't hope to match Shields. She did, however, possess an abundance of mental toughness, and that allowed her to last the full 10 rounds. If nothing else, Nelson provided Shields with a valuable learning experience. Besides extending Shields to 10 rounds for the first time, Nelson challenged Shields at close range, even occasionally working her against the ropes. Nelson also showed just enough movement to slow Shields' attack. Nonetheless, Shields scored with right hands in the fifth. That was, that was right down the pipe. Banged the body in the sixth and won every round on all three of the judges' cards. In five pro fights, Shields had yet to lose a single round. For a fighter as focused and athletically gifted as Shields, there was no easing into the pro game. In her sixth fight, she took on her best opponent to date in 154-pound world titleist Hannah Gabriels of Costa Rica. Gabriels was rising to middleweight. Shields was again reducing to middleweight. This was a true test. And the fact that it was a different level challenge was evident in the first round when an uppercut put Shields on the floor. Oh, uppercut and down goes Shields! We've talked about Shields never having to overcome adversity in the ring. Here we are. But for the first time in a career, Clarissa Shields, as a pro at least, is behind 10-8 on the cards. It was a frightening way to begin the most important fight of her career to date. But to the surprise of no one who knew her, she kept her poise, recovered quickly, and arguably won all nine of the remaining rounds of the fight. Good left hand from Shields. About five punches unanswered, and Gabriels comes back with one of her own. Fighting with a champion's mentality, Gabriels landed more punches than any of Shields' previous opponents. But as the fight wore on, Shields imposed her natural advantages in size and strength. Gabriels never wavered, as illustrated by toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges at the end of round six and the beginning of round seven. Gabriels fighting like if she's gonna go out, she's gonna go out on a shield. Good right hand again by Shields. Gabriels still right there. In the ninth, Gabriels was still trying to win, still trying to recreate the magic she had mustered in round one. It didn't happen. And again, a good exchange, and Gabriel still really trying, but finishing second. Great test for Clarissa Shields. We all feel she's done enough to win the fight. Being tested far more than she ever was. Shields won by unanimous decision, adding two world middleweight belts to her growing collection. On the same card, Christina Hammer defended her WBO middleweight title against Tori Nelson. And after the Shields fight, Hammer entered the ring. Unofficially, it was round one of their upcoming fight. After the win over Gabriels came two title fights that were separated by only three weeks. First, Shields outpointed Scotland's Hannah Rankin to win her third middleweight title. Then she decisioned former 168-pound world titleist Femke Hermans of Belgium. In the combined rounds of those fights, Shields went a perfect 20 for 20. Next, it was hammer time, though the fight was postponed for a few months with Hammer recovering from an illness. On April 13, 2019, in Atlantic City, Shields and Hammer finally met with all four major middleweight titles at stake. Shields, age 24, was 8 0. Hammer, age 28, was 24 0. Now, there can be no classic rivalries without stark contrasts. And Shields and Hammer were drastically different, both in and out of the ring. It was arguably the biggest and most significant bout in women's boxing history. Protect yourself at all times, touch gloves, let's do it. But it didn't turn out to be particularly competitive. In the first round, Shields threw fewer than 30 punches, far below her average. Instead of attacking, she studied Hammer, gauging the distance between them. 
She took control in the first 10 seconds of the second. Shields on the attack much more in the second round. And a pattern began to emerge. Shields scoring with power punches. She had, there's a good right hand there. And Hammer responding by unabashedly, and perhaps desperately, holding. You can see Shields is just going to rough her up. The uglier this fight is, the better it is for Clarissa Shields. It was evident how uncomfortable Shields' aggressiveness made Hammer. And the mouthpiece drops on a good left hand after the flurry. Shields began stockpiling rounds, and late in the seventh, and especially in the eighth, she seemed en route to a stoppage win. Hammer in wholesale retreat here. Shields on top of her with the right hand. Another combination. Six unanswered punches before Hammer can tie her up. But to Hammer's credit, she lasted the distance without ever threatening to win. And a complete victory for Clarissa Shields. Having beaten a pair of legitimate and established champions in Gabriels and Hammer, Shields seeks new challenges. Now she drops down in weight again, reducing to 154 pounds in an effort to win a world title in her third different division. Should she be successful against former world welterweight titleist Ivana Habazin on October 5th, Shields will become a triple crown champion in 10 bouts, fewer than any fighter, male or female, in history. Of course, Shields can still improve. She occasionally rushes herself and punches too wide. And oddly, in nine pro bouts, she has yet to score a single knockdown. This despite the fact that she's repeatedly pummeled most of her opponents with clean shots. I won't be surprised if Shields scores her first knockdown when she tackles Croatia's Habazin on a Showtime Boxing Special Edition. Clarissa Shields continues to intrigue us and challenge herself. How the remainder of her professional career will unfold remains to be seen, but for some reason, it seems like she's just getting started.